Hey, how is everybody doing today? It is Dalton here, and I'm just going to be doing a quick podcast, just kind of explaining and and just kind of breaking down um, what we can expect from North Turner now that he's offense coordinator with the Panthers and how that affects the values of some of the players in the offense. First of all, let's just kind of get an overview of North Turner and you know what he brings his offense. He has been one of the best offensive-minded coaches in the past, you know, past couple decades and um we're just going to kind of look over some of the some of the stats that he's had over the past 10 years starting with the chargers in 07 through 2012 when he was play calling for them as their head coach um put up very solid numbers there went on to be the browns 2013 as their office coordinator then moved on with the vikings 2014 to 2016 as their office coordinator and took off the last year away from football just waiting for the right situation to evolve and now he's here with the panthers so Um, North Turner's offense um, has actually averaged 24.5 points per game um, over the past 10 years, and the Panthers only averaged 22.4 last year. So when we're looking at um, the whole offense as a whole, um, we can expect um, their offense to get better and some of the players' values to just increase based off that number alone. So let's just kind of just break it down, just kind of position by position and kind of see... um, what we can expect from different players. For example, Cam Newton. Um, I mean, if you're expecting uh, an offense coordinator to come in and just kind of change and mold mold a player into a system, it doesn't seem like North Turner is going to do that. It seems like that Turner is actually going to um, mold that system around Cam Newton. It says he already said that he's not going to limit Cam Newton. He's going to run the ball, is what Turner said. He says that that's what makes him the dynamic player he is. I mean, certainly that is Cam Newton. He's one of the most unique players in the league. So we should expect Cam Newton to continue rushing the ball and being that that factor in the running game from that quarterback position and adding the extra element in your fantasy game as well. What we can expect, though, um, from, from Cam Newton is to actually improve on some of his passing yardage. Um, when you look at... Of what North Turner has been able to do and um, done with his offenses over the past 10 years. He's averaged around 250 yards per game um, through the air, and Cam Newton last year only averaged 216. So there's some room to grow there, and uh, Turner, um, I mean, Cam Newton kind of fits into Turner's wheelhouse. Uh, Turner um, kind of likes his quarterbacks to get the ball downfield and is more of a, a, a deep ball um coordinated offense where he's is very into um getting the ball downfield and whatnot i think cam kind of fits into that um that mold that um he has worked with in the past with guys like philip rivers um um in the past so so um cam noon he can he can expand on that a little bit um with that being said i mean just kind of studying some of the studying some of the quarterbacks that he's worked with he's elevated the games of you know a guy like sam bradford um, a couple years back when he was fully healthy in 2016, um, he was able to put up over two and a half more fantasy points per game than he had over his entire career on a per game basis, um, helped his completion percentage increase, cut down on interceptions, passing yards were higher than his career average. So those are certainly very good signs for Cam Newton. Cam Newton um, currently, hold up, give me a sec. Cam Newton is currently being uh, drafted as a top 10 quarterback and we can expect him to to not only um, mimic some of his numbers that he had last year but kind of improve a little bit on there on those numbers and kind of elevate him to you know potentially a top five quarterback this year so he could be a nice value in those mid mid uh mid rounds where quarterbacks are starting to go as a guy who can elevate himself into the top five so i'm really liking cam newton as a nice value quarterback if you're kind of deciding to wait on him and not get uh, one of those top guys whether it's brady rogers russell wilson all those guys so i'm liking cam newton for next year um so uh let's get look at christian mccaffrey this is a guy that i think that will benefit probably the most just being under north turner north turner has had a ton of experience with working with um receiving backs when you look at a guy like ladanian tomlinson a guy like darren sproles um ryan matthews and ronnie brown even a guy like even a guy like mike tolbert not known for catching the ball caught 54 receptions um in 2011 with the chargers as a running back and then you look at tomlinson who had 60 receptions 
And then you look at a guy like Sproles with 75 targets. So, so he's worked with some really, really good receiving backs, but you can make the case that Christian McCaffrey is a better receiving back than all those guys. And that's essentially what his game is. Um, if you look at a, 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 a per or per season basis of the receiving production um, of the running backs that North Turner has worked with over the past 10 years, they actually all outpace in yards, receptions, and targets over what Christian McCaffrey did last year, which is kind of insane to think about. Now, mind you, those are the receiving backs as a total, as a total group, and not just one per season. But regardless, we should we can expect him to you know probably improve on what he was able to do as as a receiver last year, which which should only make um, make you feel a lot safer about taking him. Um, as a top 10 back because he was able to put up top 10 numbers last year um, you know we can expect to kind of improve on that in that aspect and he has such a such a high floor that you're getting um, out of him now mind you Jonathan Stewart just got cut so I mean Christian McCaffrey I mean he only had like 435 rushing yards last year so even if he's able to improve on that just slightly let's say let's bump it up to 600 those are some extra those, those are some extra fantasy points that you can use to now elevate him, you know, potentially to even the top five running back, you know, you know, up there with the, the Kareem Hunts, the David Johnsons, the, the Gurleys, the Bells. Now, probably, he's, he's probably not going to surpass him just because of, um, he's not that workhorse. He's not, he's not going to be that huge touchdown kind of guy as far as a, as a rushing perspective. But regardless, his, his receiving role will make him, um, consistently be up there with the top running backs um week to week so um i mean i'm super excited about him i I think as far as um a guy taking him in like the late late round two i think that's certainly a guy that i'm targeting in drafts you know as a running back you know let's say i'm i'm going towards guys like receiver like deandre hopkins or tony brown in the first round you know you come back around grabbing mccaffrey or um whatnot i think i think you can put up very very solid numbers and really excited about him this year um, now let's look at a guy, uh, let's, let's move over to the receiving position, let's look, out, look at a guy like Devin Funches, who right now is the number one receiver um, on the Panthers. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen at free agency or the draft or all that stuff, but really, um, just kind of like studying some of the receivers that Turner's worked with in the past, whether it's Vincent Jackson, Josh Gordon, or even uh, Stefan Diggs, we can kind of get an understanding of you know how the top receiver has been utilized in North Turner system. I mean, let's look at Vincent Jackson and what he was able to do with and without North Turner. He was able to put up an extra full full PPR point per game with North Turner versus without North Turner throughout his entire career. Um, his targets were actually down about over over a target per game when he's with Turner, which is kind of a little concerning as far as. Um, as far as the volume is concerned, but 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 the efficiency was there in that offense, and I mean Jackson was near the top um, every year in yards per reception, which kind of goes along with um, you know Cam Newton kind of being a deep ball passer. Um, may, maybe they're looking to for to Devin Funch just to kind of stretch the field a little more, um, whatnot, which would help him as far as a receiver, uh, fantasy receiver goes. But it'll make him a little more volatile in the week to week consistency you can expect from him. Um, mind you, Jack, Vincent Jackson in those five years he worked with North Turner was never wide receiver one, but he was consistently wide receiver two, and he finished as high as the th- the wide receiver thirteen in both two thousand nine and two thousand eleven. But he also he also failed to finish higher than nineteenth in the league in targets during those five years. So th- th- those are a little concerning numbers that the number one receiver wasn't necessarily getting that insane volume that you would like to see out of it. And especially Vincent Jackson, who I think is kind of a similar comparable to, to Devin Funch. is not, not this insane elite talent, but a very solid receiver in his own right. Um, a very solid receiver who was uh, able to get the job done. And that's with a solid quarterback in Phillip Rivers up there. Now let's look, let's look, at, let's look at 2013 with the Browns. And th- this is where you kind of see... A receiver really really kind of break out under North Turner and that's Josh Gordon Josh Gordon was dominant in 2013 he was the number two overall receiver um, he was number one in fantasy points per game he missed two games yet still had over 1600 yards and nine touchdowns um, 
He led all receivers with 40 more receptions with 19 yards per reception. There we go. We kind of see that that trend there um, with the deep ball passing ability and uh, getting those get those long receptions. Um, but we see Josh Gordon in that one year had over double the PPR points that he had per on a per game basis than he has in the rest of his career. He was averaging over 11 targets per game and whatnot. And while while you can kind of say that, all right, Josh Gordon isn't in the same, or Devin Funches in the same category as Josh Gordon, you can still, you can still kind of take away that he was able to elevate the talents around him and kind of work around the talents. When you look, when you look at the Cuban Browns roster that year, they didn't have any running backs. They didn't have, they, he, he molded the offense to best suit his talented players, which was Josh Gordon. And therefore Josh Gordon was at, able to break out and have a very, very big year. And then when you look at a guy like uh, Stefan Diggs in this 2016 season, um, you know, during the three seasons with the Vikings, no receiver cracked 1,000 yards, but Stefan Diggs was the only receiver to have over 100 targets in any year, and that was in the 2016 season. But uh, he was putting up high-end wide receiver two numbers on a per-game basis before getting hurt. He went down and whatnot. Um Really, you can kind of take away that, okay, it was Diggs breaking out or whatever, but again, he was working around the town. He was getting Diggs the ball. One thing I do want to note is that uh, North Turner's offense has not never supported two wide receivers. He's only supported one wide receiver. Actually, the best that a number two receiver over the past 10 years has fared in Turner's offense was actually in 2016 as Adam Thielen finished as the 37th best wide receiver in terms of points per game and that's as a wide receiver too so if it, 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 let's let's say let's say the panthers go out and they sign a big name um big name wide receiver um like a sammy Watkins, they bring him in i think that i think that really really would hurt devin Funches' value as we have seen that he the, the offense really hasn't able to sustain two receivers in the same year and even if they go ahead and draft someone, I think I think it's just kind of like you, not, now you're kind of choosing between one or one one or two guys. Obviously, the the mold can be you know you know you know bucked, and this trend trend doesn't have to exist. But I think it's something to definitely be aware about um, as far as other pass catchers go in the the Panthers offense. And as far as far as Stephon Diggs as a or I mean uh, Devin Funches as a whole, um, we we can expect him to kind of put up those low end to to mid wide receiver two numbers yet again um in that offense i'm not really expecting a big big breakout again this year i'm kind of expecting m- more of the same as far as Devin funches goes but I, I one thing that i was really concerned about um i was i was looking at the splits as far as how Devin funches fared with greg olson versus without greg olson and the numbers were pretty troubling as far as Devin funches was essentially a wide receiver four with uh with Greg Olson in and more of a low end wide receiver one with him out. So if Greg Olson is fully healthy, I'm actually kind of looking to stay away from Devin Funches and his value right now. Um, in that offense, I just don't, I think, I think that as a player, the upside is there, but m- more so working in this offense with the other talents around him, maybe hindering him from being that wide receiver one that people are hoping he can be. Now, um, well, as far as far as other receivers, Curtis Samuel, nothing more than like a late round flyer, and really no one else. And until we see really what the full roster construction is, we can't really make um, too many opinions on it. But regardless, um, Funch is kind of the only guy that I feel like is fantasy relevant um, in that offense as of now. Now let's move on to the tight end position, and this is something that I'm uh, I'm really kind of intrigued about, Greg Olson. Now let let's kind of look at what North Turner has been able to do with some of the tight ends he's worked with in the past. Let's talk about a guy like Antonio Gates, who was already productive when Antonio Gates, uh, or when North Turner took over, kind of similar to how Greg Olson is now. Greg Olson, already productive, but North Turner is now coming to the offense. Mm -hmm. Antonio Gates was able to put up an extra, over an extra full PPR point per game in North Turner's system, got more, uh, got more receptions, a little more touchdowns, more yards, um, he finished as the tight end four or better in four of the six seasons he was with. He was with um, North Turner, so very, um, very promising. Obviously, obviously, you're talking about Antonio Gates, one of the best tight ends um, ever. 
but regardless, it's still promising to see him improve on those numbers in North Turner's, uh, well, while North Turner was there. But now, now let's move on to the next coaching gig, and that was with the Browns, 2013. What he was able to do with Jordan Cameron kind of should hint towards what he's been able to elevate as far as tight ends go and their fantasy value. Now, Jordan Cameron was kind of this no-name that no one really knew about, and North Turner turned him into a fantasy star. He uh, he he became the the fourth best tight end in terms of fantasy that year and put up numbers that he wasn't able to replicate anywhere in any other system and any other team throughout the rest of his career. Essentially, almost tripling his points per game average as far as fantasy goes in that one season and put up monstrous numbers in that offense. So that that's super promising for what he's able to do with tight ends and how he involves them in his offense. Now let's go let's go to Kyle Rudolph and what he was able to do with the Vikings. Um, now we're looking at what he, Kyle Rudolph's been able to do in the system versus without the system. An extra point and a half points per game, fantasy points go for Kyle Rudolph in the offense, an extra reception per game, over an extra target per game, uh, more than 10 yards per game. And this is not include. I mean, this is including the, the, in 2016, where Kyle Rudolph was actually the number two tight end in fantasy as far as PPR goes. So really promising for tight ends for Greg Olson. I think Greg Olson, um, I mean, obviously he was very banged up last year and assuming he's healthy, um, we can expect him to kind of put up um, at least similar numbers to what he was able to put up in the past few seasons before getting injured. And, you know, actually probably even like increasing those numbers a little bit i think i think he's a very very good option as far as um drafters who kind of miss out on the elite tight ends um in let's say like a gronk Ertz, or kelsey let's say you miss out on one of those guys in the couple top three rounds or whatever you can go grab a guy like an olsen in fourth or fifth who i think will be a nice bargain who you'll be able to grab um a little later but he'll put up very similar stats those guys probably probably not the super elite stats but but very very similar and consistent stats there so i'm really liking olsen i'm really liking this offense as a whole um i I think i think that everyone um has a little bit to improve on Uh, maybe devin funches kind of stays around where he's at maybe maybe not that huge bump there but mccaffrey olsen cam should at least see a little bit of improvement if not um a lot of improvement as far as fantasy goes this year yeah, and that's about it. Obviously, obviously, a lot of it comes down to what 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 the Panthers doing free agency, whatnot. They they just uh, traded for Torrey Smith. Don't really see that being much of a fantasy asset or re- really have much relevance there. But regardless, um, it's kind of good to know um, how coaching affects fantasy football. As far as that goes, we saw what Sean McVay was able to do last year with the Rams. Um, how Kyle Shanahan kind of transformed when he had Jimmy Garoppolo there, and some of the pieces there were Marquise Goodwin and whatnot. But regardless, um, definitely something to keep an eye on for North Turner and the Panthers. Um, And with that, I'll be uh, signing off here. So I'll catch you later.